And we'll get into all the slick fielding and the success at the plate lately, but Luis, your first career appearance on the mound. I was calling the showcase the other day. I blinked. The inning's over. It's a one, two, three. How you doing? And give us the breakdown of what went down the other day. You know, I'm doing well, but, you know, it was a, it was a fun situation, but not good at the same time because of the way the game was going. But I feel as a position player, it's something you always, you always want to do, and I got that chance to do it. When's the last time you pitched? Whew, I must have been like 10 or 12 years old. I mean, my coaches didn't like taking me out of the infield to go pitch, so it's been a while since that happened. So two things. One, give me the strategy when you're on the mound. And two, did you even know you were going to pitch this year? Is that something that your coach talks to you about and goes, oh, hey, Luis, by the way, can you throw 60-something? We'll throw you on the mound if it's a lopsided affair. I mean, it's not something we, we plan, you know, I think like stuff like that just happens. I just happened to be on the bench that day and I got the opportunity and I was talking to the guys and I think we just, you know, you always mess around warming up and stuff. And when we were in the cage warming up, when they told me I was going in, I just figured, hey, I'm just going to throw it as slow as I can and <laughs> see what happens. So do you go to any of the other relievers after the game? And you're like, hey, listen, I mean, I got it too. Like we can we can go to toe to toe <laughs> if you want. <laughs> I did have a couple of guys come to me and be like, Wow, um, I work all off season, throw 95, 96, and you're over here throwing 60 miles an hour and getting outs, and I'm struggling with it. You know, they mess with me a little bit about <laughs> it, but it is what it is. You know, it worked, and that's it. One more on the pitching. Give me the line you told me when I said hello during the commercial break. Hey, you just got to keep it under the BP uh, speed. I think that's a secret <laughs> right there. Keep it under BP. They're not used to that, and you'll get out of them. If you can't, this is good for everyone at home because I was one of them. If you can't throw 99. <laughs> Below B speed, not 88. Don't give me any of that. Below. Keep it in the 60s, okay? I like it. Under no, the bar. You stay 70, 80. You stay 70, 80, that you're going to get crushed out there most likely. <laughs> so you mentioned what your bullpen guys do in the offseason. How about what you do in the offseason, which is the amazing training that you do, especially with your hand-eye coordination, which leads to not only your incredible defense, but your ability to snag bats in the dugout, which was one of my favorite plays from the entire season of 2017 <laughs> uh, when Adeni Echeverria is at the plate, and he just whips that bat into the dugout, and you snatched it out of thin air. What was your reaction when that all happened? I, honestly, it that moment felt like it was minutes long, and when I went to see the video, it took about five seconds for everything to happen. In my head, when I saw the bat coming at me, my thought was just try to stop it, and I feel like once it hit my hand, it just closed, and the bat was right there. So when you say it felt like five minutes, were you in the zone, in the dugout? I guess it must have been, you know, I was paying attention to the game and saw the bat coming and just threw my hand up and there it was. You know? TJ Rivera looked in the camera afterwards <laughs> as if he had seen a ghost. Did he say anything to you afterwards? I, th I think it took a couple seconds for everybody to register what just happened, I think including me. I mean, everybody was looking to see where the bat landed, especially TJ because he was next to me. I actually had Dom to my right, he was just on the ground just hiding somewhere. <laughs> but. He just, he just asked me, did you catch that? I was like, I, I think so. I I'm not sure, but I did. You saved lives. And the last one on, on the bat save, I'm, I'm wondering when, when you're right here, right, and the bat's coming at you, my natural reaction would be both, right? You've got the one hand just chilling and the other one bringing the bat in like you've done this before. <laughs> well, I mean, it was over my head, so I figured this was the easiest way to do it, just get out to the side a little just in case I missed it, but I caught it, so didn't have to worry about that after. We've seen that move from you before, though, in your off-season training with your hand-eye coordination. Why is that so important to you and how it translates on the field? I mean, as a, as a middle infielder, or honestly any infielder at all, I feel hand-eye, it's, it's one of the most important things to have. You know, the quicker you can be and the more accurate you can be while doing that, it's going to help you, you know. You just got to be be able to work in different different situations, different positions, different angles, and it's all going to come together one day, and it's going to help you out, you know? Oh, what are you catching awesome. here? Yeah, are those? Yeah, like, what are those? So those are called Hiko sticks, right? So they are like three-pronged. They're three different colors right there. They're throwing them at me, and they're telling me which color to catch and which hand. And, you know, at the beginning, it was a little tougher, but once you do it pretty much two, three times a week, you start getting used to it. It becomes easier, and you got to start doing harder drills and different stuff. Like one of my things now with those is I'll do the ladders and while they're throwing them at me so I can work on my feet and work on my hands at the same time. I love that.
On your defense, who was your idol growing up? I mean, growing up, being from Venezuela, I think this is the same thing for everybody as Omar Vizquel. You know, that was the guy that I always try to play like and, you know, still do, actually. Luis, I was watching the game the other day, and when you came up to bat, uh, the person I was watching the game with, he goes, wow, good beard. That is a <laughs> really good beard. Where do you believe your beard ranks amongst baseball beards? Give me, like, a, a 1 to 10. I don't know. One to ten, that's tough. That's a, it's a lot of people with great beards, you know. I think I think nowadays there's a lot of guys with great mustaches at the moment, right? I can grow <laughs> one too. I just don't feel like shaving at this point. I've had them before. But I think it's up there, especially when, you know, when I can get to clean it up. Because now, nowadays I'll fix it up, get it all lined up, straight down, and I put the mask on and everything just gets messed up. So I'm just keeping it, letting it run f wild right now. That's 2020, man. That's how it works. This is healthy thickness yeah, that's right, right here, okay? He's taking <laughs> care of the beard. Luis, it was really fun. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Good luck the rest of the way. We'll talk soon, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys.